5.2, exploring quotients of polynomial functions from the Nelson Advanced Functions book. Um, today we're going to start part one of three parts in graphing rational functions. And the handouts to match this exercise is on my PD Wiki site, and I will put the link to it below. So the reason I'm doing it this way is because I don't feel the textbook does enough work on this for you to completely understand what's going on. So I'm going to go through a lot of graphs and we're going to discuss the three different types of rational functions that you will be graphing. So today's lesson is on the functions that have a degree in the numerator less than a degree in the denominator. Okay, so here's a picture of what we're looking at. f at x over g at x f at x is less than g at x in degree. Now you know what degree means. Degree means what's the power up here. So if you look at the examples that we're going to be graphing below, and again, you can get yourself a copy of this from the PB Wiki site, you'll notice that in the first ones, they're just one over. So that's like a reciprocal function. <coughs> Whereas the next ones, they have um, they're rational functions, right? They have something in the top, something in the bottom. It's not just one over a function. So we're going to be graphing all of these, and I will make it very clear. You'll be so good at this by the time we're done. You're going to say that was really easy. It is easy if you have someone explaining it to you properly, which I hope to do. Okay, so if the degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator. You will only have one horizontal asymptote, and that is y equals 0. It's the only asymptote that you can have. Now the reason that is, is because if I have a degree, let's say I have um, x in the numerator and I have an x cubed in the denominator, you can see that whatever I put in for x, this number down here is always going to be so much bigger than the one on the top, even if this was squared. If I squared a million or I cubed a million, you can see that this number is going to grow much faster than the numerator. So I'm dividing something relatively small by something really big. And of course, the bigger it is, then the smaller my quotient will be. So the answer is going to get smaller and smaller as we approach infinity for x. So that's why the asymptote here is always going to be y equals 0. Now, there's two types of vertical asymptotes, and the textbook doesn't really go into this at all. One of them is called an odd asymptote. The reason it is odd is because in the denominator you have this, and it's raised to the power of 1. So that makes it an odd asymptote, whereas this one over here you can see is raised to the power of 2, so an even number, so it's an even asymptote. When you have an even asymptote, that means that as you approach the asymptote from either side, you're going to approach the same direction. So it's kind of like a bit of a volcano going up like this, or it could be going down like this. So the behavior on both sides of the asymptote is going to be in the same direction for an even asymptote, whereas for an odd asymptote, if you look here, the asymptote here would be at x equals 3, and you can see that one side's going up, one side's going down. So for the odd asymptote, again, you would have something going up on one side and down on the other. Odd even. Okay, so we're going to graph all of these using the method of single roots, double roots, and triple roots. Now there's something we didn't talk about yet, but you know what a single root is. We've done that in grade 11. A single root is when you go through the x-axis. So a graph like, let's say we draw a parabola. This parabola has two single roots, right? Those are single. A single root has to pass through that x-axis. It goes right through. Whether it's coming down or going up, it's going to go through. So don't just go to it. Now you know that a, a double root, that's like when you had something like this with your parabola and it touched here and went right back up. It did not go through the x-axis. That's your double root. And a triple root, of course, would be like this. So that's like your y equals x cubed. So 
it actually has three roots of whatever this value is on the x-axis. So single root, double root, triple root. Some people have trouble drawing those triple roots. You just kind of go down and let it sit there and then go down the other side. And the, me the method of even and odd vertical asymptotes, which we've just discussed, and the direction towards the horizontal asymptote. Now we know in all of these examples that the there will be a horizontal asymptote and they will all be y equals zero. Now of course when you're doing a test your teacher is not going to say these are part one rational functions. You have to check the degree all the time. Okay so we'll try to emphasize that as we go along. I've copied out these on the next few pages and we will um, graph them here. Okay so let's look at the first one. Let's move this up a little bit. So we have 1 over x times x minus 2. I'm going to get up my little ruler because what we need to do is draw in where the asymptotes are. So the asymptotes for the, is the value that makes the denominator 0 here, right? So I have an asymptote for this value of x, which would be x equals 0. So I have x equals 0, and I have x equals 2 for my vertical asymptotes. I'll just denote them as VA. So you should draw them, and if you were in my class, I would expect that you would label them as well. Your teacher probably will want you to do that too. So I'm going to say x equals 2, x equals 0. Some people have trouble remembering whether it's x or y. Just remember that all the values on this line have an x-coordinate of 2. 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3. Okay, so I've drawn them. Now, what do I do? Where's the rest of my graph? You have to remember that your graph has to be everywhere for the all values of x. So I need something in this section, I need something between these two asymptotes, and I'm going to need something past this asymptote. So if I look to the numerator now, because this is where we're going to find out where the x-intercepts are. You can't, for an x-intercept, remember with the rule, set y equal to 0. So if I set y equal to 0, this can never be equal to 0 because, first of all, the denominator can't be 0. So all I have to look for to find the x-intercepts is what makes the numerator 0. So in this case, I would say 0 equals 1, and the answer is it doesn't. So there are no x-intercepts. Easy enough. Okay, so I know it's not going to cross the, the x-axis, and I also know that the degree in the numerator, and you should be checking this out and, and say it to yourself every time, the degree in the numerator is 0, the degree in the denominator is 2. So that means I have a horizontal asymptote of, I'm going to put this on here, y equals 0. Okay, so nice, I've got all my asymptotes on. Now I need to know where's the graph going to go. So I'm going to pick a number, any number between, well, this time I'm going to pick 1 because it's not an asymptote, so it's easy to plug it in. If I plug in 1 into this function, what would I get? I'd have 1 over 1 times negative 1. That's negative 1. So I would have the point 1 and negative 1. Now what else do I know? I know I have two vertical asymptotes, and underneath I'm going to write that they're both odd. Now remember what I said about an odd asymptote means a function is going to go in opposite directions. So because I'm limited by this horizontal asymptote and these vertical ones, that means this has nowhere to go but down on this side and down on this side. Now whether or not this was the maximum value you could do some other value checks, but generally if you're right bang between two asymptotes, it's going to be right in the middle. So that's why I chose one. Now these are sketches. They are not perfect graphs. And the exact graphs, that's what you're going to spend a lot of time on in calculus. Okay, so now that I know that this is going down here, I've got part of the graph. I still need to know what's going to happen on this side and this side. Because this is an odd asymptote and this is going down, that means on this side it has to be going up. So in order for it to go up, I have to be on this side and this has to approach 
zero there. Now you can check a value, put in three. One over three times one, so it's one third when it's three. So if you put in something closer to two, you would get a higher value, but that doesn't matter. I know that I'm bound by this asymptote that is odd. If this one is going down on this side, this has to go up on this side. And because it's going up, it has to be in this part of the graph because I can't cross this x-axis to get there. I can't say, well, it's going to start here. No, because I don't have any x-intercepts at all for this function. So there's my graph. So pretty easy, isn't it? Okay, let's go to the next one. And we'll get a little faster as we move along here. I just want to emphasize some of the major points here. So again, I look. There is no x-intercept again. 1 equals 0. No x-intercept. The degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator. I have two horizontal or vertical asymptotes again in the same place. So we're just looking at all the different combinations for these two. So this is x equals 2, x equals 0. Now this time I'm going to write under my x equals 2, this vertical asymptote is an even one. You see how it has a degree of 2. So I'm going to write even under here and under the 0 it's odd. Now again all I need to do is pick a point that I can start with. I need to know where is the graph sitting here. And remember, don't just fill in one part of this. You need all three zones here to speak. Okay, so I'm going to put in 1. So 1 over 1, 1 times 2 is negative 1 squared is positive. So 1 over 1 is 1. So that means I'm here, right? So I'm above the x-axis this time. That means it's a positive value in this zone. So it's bound by these asymptotes, so I'm going to go up on this side, and I'm going to go up on this side. Remember, there's no x-intercept, so I can't be going down. This is an even asymptote, so if this is going up here, this also has to go up here. See, they have to match the same direction. And I didn't write on, and I should have, my asymptote of y equals 0. Always dotted line and always labeled y equals 0. So there's my even asymptote. This one is odd, so this one has to be going down on this side and approach the horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. And there you go. Pretty easy, isn't it? Okay, let's keep going because we've got a few to do. So let's get a little faster here. I'm going to sketch in the asymptotes. So again, if you look at the graph, there's x equals 0, x equals 2, and y equals 0. So we've got all three of them, we've got our horizontal and vertical asymptotes sketched on. And again, I'm taking a look at the type of asymptotes we have, vertical. So x equals 2, that one is even. And x equals 0, that one's also even. Even because they have a degree of 2, an even number. There are no x-intercepts, again, because 0 is never equal to 1. And I have everything going up and I have no x-intercepts. So that means everything's going to be positive, right? Let's plug in a 1 value here. What do I get? I get 1, 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. My graph is going up. There's no x-intercepts. This is an even asymptote, so i got to match my direction here and approach 0. This one's going up and I approach 0 this way. And there you go. Okay, let's take a look at number D. Letter D of number 1. So this time, okay, let's take a look. We have no x-intercepts, no x-intercepts. We have horizontal asymptote. The degree in the numerator is less than the degree in the denominator. Even though you know all these questions are going to be like that, it's really worthwhile for you to say that to yourself so that when you're doing a question that isn't given, like these ones are all the same, then you will be thinking of these things as you're doing your homework exercises where they're all different. So I have x equals 2 and x equals 0. Now, are they odd or even? When x is 2, we have a degree of 3. That means it's an odd asymptote. 
that means I'm going in opposite directions, whereas when x equals 0, it's squared, so it's going to go in the same direction. Again, just pick a point. Pick a point on your graph that is going to give you a location of the function in that area. So I'm going to choose 1. Why not? 1 is the easiest one to plug in. 1 is the loneliest number. So I have 1 divided by, this is 1 squared, so that's positive, positive, 1 minus 2 cubed. Be careful, negative 1 cubed is negative. So that means I have negative 1 for my answer when x is 1. So I'm going to put a little dot there. Okay, so I'm bound by all these asymptotes all around it. So this must be going down on this side and down on this side. This is an odd asymptote. So if this is going down, this is going up. And this one is even, so this is going down. It has to be matching on this side. And there we go. I bet you're even starting to like doing this, right? Okay, let's look at the next one. Oh, this one's a little different, isn't it? Because it has in the numerator x minus 1. So my x-intercept, so I'm going to do it in red, so and I'm going to rub it here. x-intercept, so I say 0 is equal to x minus 1. That's how you find x-intercept, set y equal to 0. So x is equal to 1 is the x-intercept. And what kind of root is it? It's a single root. Okay, so it's not squared, right? So that's my x-intercept. I still have the degree in the numerator is 1, the degree in the denominator is 2. So degree 1 over degree 2. That means I have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. I'll do that really quickly. y equals 0. I have a vertical asymptote at 0. Don't forget this one. Everyone always seems to forget if there's just an x there. That means 0 and 2. So I'm going to sketch that one on here, 0 and 2. Okay, are they even or odd asymptotes? x equals 2. It's odd, has a degree of 1. This has a degree of 1, so this is odd. And x equals 0, it's also an odd asymptote. Okay, now I have to pass through this one. So I still need to know where my function is, right? Where is it? Now, because this is at one, I don't want to use one because I'm just going to get zero. So I'm going to pick a number on this side this time. You could put negative one in if you wanted to. Oh no, let's do two. Oh, sorry, we can't do two. That's an asymptote. We have to use three. So if I put in three, now all you're trying to figure out is it positive or negative? So three minus one, positive. Three times three minus one, positive, 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 positive. That means I'm in this part. I'm above the x-axis. So we have a limitation going up. And we have this one as we approach infinity. So now I have the first part of it. Now this is odd. So that means this is going down here. And this is a single root. So I have to pass through it and go up. So this one's a little different shape again, right? Okay, and this is odd, so on this side, it has to go down. And there you go. Now you could test some other points to see if I'm right, but um, I am. <laughs> I am right, or I wouldn't be telling you this. Okay, so this one, kind of similar. So we still have that x-intercept. So we have an x-intercept of 1. x-intercept of 1. We have, I'm not going to get a ruler out this time, I'm getting lazy. So x equals 0. For this one, it's odd. Good idea to write that on. x equals 2 is even asymptote because it has a degree of 2. And my x-intercept is 1 and it's a single root. Single root. Okay, now we're all set to graph. Oh, forgot to write in my horizontal asymptote y equals 0. Okay, so let's pick 3, because I like 3. 3 minus 1, positive. 3 squared, uh, so 3 minus 2 is 1 squared times 3. Everything's positive, positive, positive. That means I'm still going up this way. 
and I'm going down this way. But this time, this asymptote is even. So that means this has to have been going up on this side and down and through this one. And don't forget, you still have another section here to fill in. It's odd, it's down on this side, up on this side, and approaches the um, x-axis. Okay, we're almost done. We've got a few more, just a few little tricky ones here. So the next one is a little bit more complicated because we have a little more happening up here in the numerator. So the first thing I want to do is, what are the x-intercepts? So you say, what makes the numerator zero? Oh, sorry, gotta bring that down. It's one thing when I teach in school, at least the kids get to yell at me and say, Miss, we can't see it. It's a little harder. I have to make it sure that you can. Okay, so the x-intercepts, what makes the numerator zero? Zero and two. X-intercepts, zero and two. I'm gonna put little dots, zero and two. Um, vertical asymptotes, I have four and minus four. This one's odd, this one's even. So x equals four. Remember that asymptotes are equations of lines. Don't say the vertical asymptote is four. That's not true. It's a line, x equals four. And while I'm saying that to you, I'm gonna put this one in here. So that's x equals four and it's odd. And x equals negative four, one, two, three, four. That one's going, where did it go? One, two, three, four. Okay, so this one's the even one. X equals negative four, even. And I have these two, and I also have y equals zero. Why, 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 why? The degree in the numerator, so you have to think about what if it was expanded, what would the degree be? So this would be like x squared over, and this would be squared times an x, so x cubed. So f at x, the degree here, is less than the degree in the denominator. As this gets really big, the, the um, ratio gets very, very small. Okay, so you have to remember that. Okay, so what are we gonna do with this? We have an odd asymptote. So let's go, let's go to five and see what happens. One, two, three, four. Let's say what happens at five. Now we don't need to know the exact value again. All I'm looking for, is it going to be positive or negative? So that would give me positive, 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 right? Everything in these brackets, if I plug in a five, is going to give me a positive value. So that means I'm, up, I'm going up this way. So it has to go up and it has to go down. Now, you might say, well, you were in the, it's all positive. You're above the x-axis, but there's only one way I can approach this asymptote on this side. I can't approach it going down because I can't cross the x-axis. Okay, so I've got this one nailed. Um, this is an odd asymptote, so it's going down on this side. It has to pass through this x-intercept and it has to go back through this one. So you come up and you go back down. Now I did a calculation just to see, um, or maybe I didn't. If you plugged in one here, you'd have, um, you get a little small number, some little fraction. I don't remember exactly what it was, but you can do that if you want. But it's going to go up and go right through back here and it's going to go back down. So it looks kind of weird, but that's the way it goes. And on this side, it's even. So that means this has to match the direction of this one and go up and approach the asymptote. Looks good? Okay, let's move on. Got a couple more to do and then you can go back and try them on your own. Okay, x-intercepts. Well, look at the numerator. x-intercept is x equals zero. Vertical asymptotes, I have x is equal to one, x equals two, x equals 1 is even, x equals 2 is odd. Now normally I don't do all these with my class um, because I take them up with them, but you could have stopped sooner. <laughs> Too late to tell you that now. You could have stopped and tried some on your own and then come back and check them. Okay, so this is x equals 2, x equals 1, 2 is even, 1 is odd. And 
Again, I have a degree of 1 in the top and I have a degree of 3 in the bottom. That means I have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. Make sure you say that to yourself. X-intercepts? 0. Okay, we'll put that on here. There's my x-intercept. So now I need to know um, where am I in this little graph? I've got the asymptotes, but I need some points. All you need to do is find one zone where it's going to be positive or negative. Okay, so this was 1, 2. We could check the point 3. So if I put in 3 here and have positive, that's positive, that's positive. Anything you square is positive, and 3 minus 2 is positive. So that means this has to be going up, and this has to approach the asymptote. Okay, this one's even, so that means this is going down on this side, and I have to, I can't cross this, so that means this has to be some sort of shape that's going to go kind of around like this. Now how high it comes up is debatable, but you could at least do a small calculation and plug in 1.5 and see what happens. Because it's right in between those two asymptotes, it's probably the maximum height. And I did that, and at 1.5 you get minus 12. So it's really way down here somewhere. But it's not on my graph, so I'm just going to sketch a little one in there like that for you. Okay, so this one's odd, so that means this has to be going up on this side, and I have to pass through. Um, just a minute, what do I do here? Yeah, x equals 1. Oh, sorry, x equals 1 was my even one. Eh. This one was odd. This one was odd, and this one was even. So I graphed this before, it didn't look like that. Okay, so it was odd. I said that, and then I said even. So this was the odd one, too, because it's a degree of 1. This one's the even one with a degree of 2. Okay, so that's going down. Um, this one was even, so we need to switch the direction of this last little part. So it's coming the same direction, and it's going to go through here. But as x approaches infinity, this is going to approach 0. Okay, last one here to go. You want to stop, try it on your own, and come back? Do it. But I'm going to keep going so we don't run out of time here. So we have 4 x equals 4, x equals 4, vertical asymptotes, x equals 4, even, x equals minus 3, also even. So minus 3, 1, 2, 3, boom, 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 boom. x equals minus 3, even, and even. Okay, so what are my x-intercepts? x-intercepts. What makes the numerator 0, right? I'm going to write that in this time. What makes the numerator 0? That's all you have to do. You don't even look at the denominator because you can't make the denominator 0. That would be vertical asymptotes. Okay, so only look up here. So this would be 0. Now this time we have it squared. So 0 squared, that means it's an even sorry, a double root, a double root at zero, and I have one, which is a single root. What's the difference? Double root, you come up and touch it. Single root, you're going to pass through. So I have one here, and I have zero. I have to remember that this is the double. That's my single. Okay, so let's go to, we have four, Let's go to 5, x equals 5, and see what happens. So if I put in 5, that's positive, that's positive, that's positive, that's positive. Everything's positive. That's easy. Oh, I forgot to sketch in my... I keep forgetting that, don't I? y equals 0. You'd lose a mark for that. y equals 0, your horizontal asymptote. H, A. Well, you know, like I said, they're all in this exercise. Okay, so... That means that we have this coming down like this. That's the first part. And now we need, um, this is even, so this has to be coming 
down on this side or going up on this side of it so that my asymptotes, uh, my direction matches on both sides. I have to pass through this one and remember that one is a single root. So I'm going to go through this and I'm coming back up to this, which is a double root. So I just come up and touch it and go right back down. So it looks kind of weird, but probably would have been a little more stretched out. But it does come down here and go back up. Now I think I did this calculation for this one, and it comes out to point at one at point five. It's point zero zero, just two zeros, one six three for the y coordinate minus. Okay, so it just it just kind of just goes under here, comes back up. Kisses this zero, comes back down. Now this is an even asymptote. So even, same direction, and back up. Okay, so I hope this you found this really helpful. And again, like I said, I will have, there's two more exercises we're going to do. One with um, different degrees in the numerator and denominator, some oblique asymptotes. And so we'll cover every possibility so you can be expert rational function graphers. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe, tell your friends, get everybody on the, the channel and um, help boost up my numbers here. We're up to, uh, at this point, 699 subscribers. I'd love to get it to a thousand. And if I do, then I'll probably do calculus and vectors for you as well. Have a great day. Bye for now.